Who's heard of bricks apart from the things that bricklayers lay? Yeah? Shall I give a quick demo on the uh, refractometer? Refractometer is a device that's used that you would probably have most likely have seen where um, the winemaker's getting ready to pick his grapes and he's looking to get some sugar levels on his um, grapes before he says, right, go and pick that paddock. And basically, it's just a device that allows you to look down a lens here. Uh, you put the sap on that part of the prism, put that across there, hold it up to the light and it gives you a reading in there. And what it does is it actually tests the mineral sugar levels for you. If your mineral sugar levels are said to be about 12% or greater, you won't have pest or disease problems. That's the, um, the general thinking. And there is some scientific um, argy-bargy about that, but nonetheless, it sort of seems to be proving quite um, reliable when, it, when you go out in the field. The beauty with this, and why this is applicable in a pasta situation is, you can use that as a tool to not only monitor the progress of um, the growing of the plant, but you can use it as a tool to monitor what sort of sprays might work for you as well, whether the fish and the kelp are the most appropriate at the time. All right, you, put, um, you, you take a measurement, you put your spray on, just do a little test patch, could only be a couple of square metres of the brew that you think is necessary at the time, come back about an hour later, do another test, and if there's about a two point increase, then you know you've got the right brew there. If there's not, then you're wasting your time putting it on. So that's a useful tool for that. Another one that I, I put forward to the... Who's familiar with the Oz Dairy list? There's a list that's been put out, electronic list, an email list that uh, any dairy farmers can um, log into. And a couple of years ago I put, put forward the proposal that maybe dairy farmers or um, fodder contractors should be using that to um, determine when they cut their hay and silage. Now, for guys who have been around a while now and do a lot of hay and silage cutting, you'll see them grab a little bit of the grass and into the mouth it goes and have a chew. Doesn't mean that they haven't had breakfast yet, it's just they're checking to see what the sugar levels are like. So the switched on guys that know what sugar levels they need to be looking for. I mean, that gives you a measure, but um, being able to taste it and say, yeah, that's now ready to cut. And the reason for that is that the plant actually goes through a cycle during the course of the day and night where as we get towards the afternoon, mid-afternoon, you're getting maximum photosynthesis happening and maximum um, um, build-up of, of, of sugars in the plant to the point where you can say, now's the time to cut it, so we've got all the sugars in the top of the plant. It costs just as much to cut poor quality hay and silage as what it does um, good quality hay and silage, doesn't it?